Hey everybody, welcome back to Orwell. We are on episode four now. And uh, I gotta say, Orwell's quickly become one of my like favorite experiences. It's, I'm super into the story and I'm like, there's so many cool comments about people discussing what the possible outcomes are. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. They've even gone ahead and set up like a separate uh, like discussion hub on their Steam forums that's like full of uh, people discussing spoiler type things, right? People go and discuss the episodes that they've already finished, so it's really interesting. Uh, Nina survived for me because I didn't upload stuff in time. And the other alternative that a lot of people got uh, was that she was killed. I don't think anybody uploaded information and she survived, so it's kind of interesting, like maybe this... It certainly doesn't look good, but maybe because we didn't upload that stuff fast enough, maybe we did something okay. I don't know, it'll be interesting to figure it out. So here we go. Memory hole. <laughs> okay. April 16th? Oh, there we go. Back again, hmm? Still can't believe what happened yesterday. We let the perpetrator of the bombings escape, it seems. I don't know how this happened. Yeah, D did I do something wrong? Yes, you did. Listen, I need this job, desperately. I expected to get fired when I stepped into the office this morning. Somehow I didn't. Still, Miss Matronova has been removed from our responsibility. The police are searching for her nationwide. But what if Miss Matronova builds another bomb before they get her? What if more people die because of our mistake? Worst of all, as you found out, Abraham Goldfeld seems to have incited and planned the assaults. We need to get him today. There must be some lead on him we've overlooked. We'll keep observing all others in case we learn something new. Problem is, I kind of don't think that it's really him writing this. Um, let's review this. I'm truly sorry for having drawn the investigator's attention to you. But frankly, you overstepped the boundaries of our agreement. The bombs were meant as a warning to those who are indifferent, a beacon of remembrance for a message that the thoughts must always be free. They were not meant to kill. Once again, you disappoint with your insurmountable hatred and rage. I don't know. It seems sketchy that he would be like, I've drawn the investigator's attention to you. I don't know. It's just weird. Okay, here's a call between Juliet and Harrison. She's going to tell him about uh, Nina, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, O'Donnell speaking. Harrison, it's Juliet. Isn't this your office number? You're working on Sunday? Look, as much as I appreciate that I'm once again so important to you, I'm a bit in between things. Harrison, Nina is in the news. Great, and what is it to me? Take a look at the TMB and find for yourself. I guess we can upload that she's working right now. The Bonton bombings? Nina? This isn't some stupid joke, ain't it? She does work a lot. Nina, what in the hell? Where did you get yourself into? There's more. I spoke to her yesterday. She called me. I've never heard her so scared. She was be said she was being tracked by someone and needed to skip town. She just wanted to let me know what was going on in case anything happened to her. And then she packed a few things and went on her way. She did message me about someone tracking her as well. Though, or thought... It was this hacker who was screwed with her with our page. What did she tell you? She suspected someone to be wiretapping her calls. She wasn't exactly willing to talk about it. I don't know for sure, but I think it could have been the police. Well, this is fucking brilliant. How long till they discovered the connection to us, huh? They might be listening to this very call as we fucking speak about Nina. Why would they? We didn't do anything. Or did you? No, damn it, but it's becoming blatantly obvious those government assholes are trying to set us up. The bombs were exactly where we held our protests. Then those letters with the song Abe obsessed about. And now you tell me that they've been in contact with Nina since y just yesterday? Pretty much proof that they've been waiting for. We're cooked. You really believe the government has it in for us? I thought you and the Gov were best friends forever now after reading all your opinion pieces. For what reason would they be after us? Why now? What did we do? Speak, a, speak up against them one too many times? The fuck do I know? We should seek help just in case. Who's gonna help us? Joseph Langley might be worth a shot. Who? Cassandra's lawyer, don't you remember? A freaking lawyer? What do you want him to do? Bust law enforcement? The government? He really understands our situation. He also knows 
Joseph. Abe also knew Joseph. Oh, shit. Oh, really, Jules? Okay, I gotta upload this, like, stat. They make the laws, they break the news. They knew each other? Very well, this could be a new lead. I will request to consider Joseph Langley a target. After letting Miss Madanova escape, we have to get a hold of Abraham Goldfels by any means possible. We have clearance to proceed. We're going to need to know some basics on who he is. Remember to check old sources. Other than that, focus on hints to Abraham Goldfels. He's the center of the crux. Okay, sorry. Uh, bah, really, Jules, they make the laws, they break the laws. We'll need to speak in a language they'll understand, not in one they own. So I take it you've got a much better plan, huh? Yeah, you're right. You did know that. Oh, wait. Take it you have a much better plan, huh? We need to get the people on our side. Turn things around. Abraham knew that. Yeah, you're right. He did know that. So now you're on... Now you're set on miraculously achieving something that Thought spent one and a half years attempting? This is not about Thought. This is me defending myself. Well, then what's your defense plan? There's this guy. A guy? Goes by the name Initiate. Might actually be a girl. Who cares? Look, this hack on the Thought blog, it was a very elaborate hack. Our site's super safe, and I'm not an amateur. The guy, girl, whatever is skilled. And Initiate mentioned having no sympathy for the government. You're going to trust a random hacker who targeted Thought simply because he doesn't like the government? Why would he first threaten us and then work with us? Leave it to me, Jules. I'll persuade Initiate with ease. Imagine the possibilities with our own hacker. Okay, you know what? Have it your way. I'll have it mine. Are you going to like the good old days? Is your Utel alias still Julesy Kerr? Might be more secure than calling each other. Well, not anymore, it's not. Not anymore. Yeah, it is. Let's get going. There goes my chilled Sunday morning. Watch yourself, okay? What, are you worried about me? Jules, I didn't know you still... Uh, no. Bye, Harry. <laughs> okay, so now we've got mail. Oh, this is him sending it to Initiate. Join forces, wise-ass. Hey, wise-ass. I have no idea who you are and why you suspect us of being involved in the Bontemps bombings. Were these usual circumstances, I wouldn't care less about a weirdo like you, but you just told me in your last email you would now tend to another. Well, have a look at the TMB. Is this the person you wanted to tend to? Soon enough, you'll have some serious explaining to do. And it won't be me. And it won't be to me, if you get what I mean. Lucky you, I'm not writing to continue this ridiculous battle, or whatever this is. Now, we've all made ourselves comfortable in the same sinking ship. I want to suggest something better than battling each other. You claim to be righteous? Then be righteous. Become a member of thought. You said you're not on the government side, so why not be on ours? Okay, let's upload this. He invited him. It doesn't mean he accepted. He continues active recruitment for thought. I wonder if this hacker will accept. Okay. Let's read the headlines. Suspect in Bonton bombings on the run. Delacroix under fire. Bonton. Despite an early arrest in the Bonton bombings, bombings case, police have narrowed their search for a lead suspect in the case. Nina M. pictured above, a veteran of the army, is suspected to have built, placed, and detonated devices at Freedom Plaza, Stalagan University, and the Circle Mall. Material for over half a dozen homemade devices have been found at her flat, strongly supporting the claim that M is indeed the perpetrator. Despite uh, special forces attempting to arrest the perpetrator, Nina M has evaded police capture and is now on the run, sparking a nationwide search for the former military veteran. The security blunder has cast a shadow on investigative efforts, which have been reported to involve a specialist team under the control of Secretary of Security Catherine Delacroix. Delaxra what? Is now highly anticipated to give a statement as to how the suspect was able to escape and what the next steps to ensure the safety of the nation will be. The opposition has last on, latched onto this failure, demanding that Delacroix step down from her role. In a statement to the National Beholder, opposition leader Michael Rutherford claimed that Delacroix has stubbornness in all the wrong places and that Delacroix has taken the wrong approach in this regard. Many people lost their lives and are still endangered thanks to her. More as the story unfolds. Heavy rainstorms coming in. Forecasts had predicted bad weather for Saturday, but no one had been expecting harrowing results of this magnitude. Trees were uprooted in the Bonton Farview area, obstructing streets and burying cars underneath them. Luckily, there have been no casualties reported, with only four people being injured. 
uh, with only four people being injured. In contrast to that, the material damage is, is expected to reach into the millions. Firefighters in the area were called to more than 300 operations and temporarily had a hard time to respond. Meteorologists have confirmed the storm caused by low Matilda is among the 10 worst rainstorms in the history of Bonton and Farview since the very beginning of weather recordings. Wow. Exclusive interview with gym founder Ronson. Our very own Jeffrey Paxton got the exclusive chance to interview gym founder Tyler Ronson after he opens his 100th fitness studio. Anything in here? No, but let's read it anyway. Your startup just opened the 100th gym in the nation. How does that make you feel? Good. The, the Projection Magazine reported you actually went to the grand opening in person and tested all the equipment. Let me emph emphasize this. Every single piece by yourself before you'd give the green light. Is that also accurate? Of course. Did that in every gym studio I've opened. Really? You must be kidding me for sure. I do not kid. So I understand you come from a pretty poor background. <laughs> Who says that? Your family had six children to feed and your father was unable to work for a large amount of your childhood. How did you overcome these obstacles to become a nationwide respected entrepreneur? My father always told my brothers and me, boys, there's not a problem you cannot solve. Go out to face whatever hinders you, and punch it in the face as hard as you can. So I did that. It's an interesting metaphor. It's definitely not a metaphor. <laughs> What do you mean by that? I went out to the bank of my parents. They were highly indebted to this bank. I went straight to the manager, punched him in the face as hard as I could. I have to admit, I am all surprised to say the least. What effect did it have? First, he went down pretty hard, hit his head on the glass table. But when he recovered, he was impressed with my strength and boldness. He suggested an investment model for a gym chain. I then came up with the name Jim. <laughs> so what does Jim stand for anyways? I think you never actually told anybody. Will you tell our readers? It stands for Jim. It's all capital letters because I thought it would look like it had more energy that way. <laughs> okay. It would be interesting if anything ever came of those random articles like that. Now, um, we need to outfit some more information on Goldfells here. So let's go back to notable alumni. Oh, no, it's uh, Langley. That's right. So we've got his photo here. Opened his own law office in the city of Bonton. It was some time ago, yes. Graduated from Stelligan. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. Simes doesn't believe in coincidences. Uh, has his own law office. That gets us access to something. What else is there? The party, people, leaders of the nation, Robert Blaine, Delacroix here, Faulkner, We've read about all of these people, have we not? I'm sure we've read this. Hmm. Harrison's timeline. Off to a chilled start in this... Off to a slow start on this chilled Sunday morning. This is going to be my day I can fucking feel it. Oh, in case anybody does recognize a woman next to me, let me know. Just kidding, very obviously. Don't be mad at me, Marka. So this is the life that you get. <laughs> this is the life when you get good money from the National Corruptor. I get it now. Interesting. So this is, okay. New girl. Uh, procedure closing raises manipulation suspicions. Here's a better picture. And now we've got access to his website, looks like. L-O-J-L, Law Offices of Joseph Langley. Profile, here's another photo. After my release from prison, I got involved in a violent knife fight and was facing a jail term for parole violation. Joseph submitted a plea for mitigation, which was granted. Now I'll spend six months in the community service and I'll be a free man again. He's a defense attorney. Joseph Langley studied criminal law at Stelligan University in Bonton. Instantly after his graduation in 92, Joseph Langley partnered with Catherine Delacroix, a, former, or a fellow student who is now officiating as Secretary of Security in the government, to found a criminal law office of their own, Delacroix and Langley Legal. Oh, interesting. Did not know that. And he is a criminal defense attorney. 
Didn't even know she had a law career going before she actively joined politics. Mr. Langley definitely has been around. This is true. So far, so good on Mr. Langley's background. Excluding the connection to Delacroix, everything seems unsurprising. What we need to know right now are his connections to Goldfells and possibly the other members of Thought. We'll get there. When Delacroix realized her ambitions for politics in 97, she and Mr. Langley decided to part ways. Langley kept his office, which was renamed to Law Offices of Joseph Langley. Since then, Joseph has taken the side of the defense in the courtroom innumerable times. His record includes everyday cases, as well as high-profile media fuel trials. So we know he studied here, but he spent a year abroad in Argentina, military service in 83. Nina was in, what was it, 91 or something? Let me check the army website. Oh, 2011. 91. Way off. 2005 to 2011. He was... Oh, this is a long time ago. I doubt that means he has any combat experience. It's fine. Spent a year abroad. Why not? I wonder what he was doing there. Probably nothing. Nothing important. Um, let's check the expertise. Another claim. My wife made a complaint about me being abusive and got charged with assault and battery for it. I turned to Joseph Langley, who successfully impeached her credibility. Scales of justice tipped in my favor thanks to this man. Now, there's a, there's a negative connotation with criminal defense lawyers for a lot of good reasons. Um... But I want to try and stay impartial and not judge him too harshly here. Yet. Uh, <laughs> Langley knows how to handle cases of various complexity. In his many years as a justice advocate, he has gained invaluable skills in a widespread area of the law. He engages in cases of the following areas. Assault, violent crimes, domestic violence, drug possession, gun possession, driving under the influence, corruption, contract violations, etc, etc. Significant cases. Joseph Langley's track record included the lion share scandal, which received nationwide media coverage in 2010. In that case, he defended construction entrepreneur Elwood Hendricks, who had taken on a governmental contract for highway construction. When it became apparent his road pavement was of inferior quality than paid for, Hendricks's firm became subject to corruption investigations. Joseph Langley took on the defense for Hendricks, during which he was able to convincingly argue that Hendricks had actually acted on behalf of the Secretary of Transportation, Greenway, who had taken the largest part of the money put aside in the fraudulent process. The case ended with a minor sentence for Hendricks, whereas Greenway had to step down and was sentenced to imprisonment. So he worked for Hendricks. Okay. Remember that perfectly well. No way anybody missed the case that time. This was either courageous or dumb. Seemingly, it turned out to be the former for some time. Now it might be the latter. Okay, we have a chat going with Langley now. It looks old. Hello, am I talking to Joseph Langley? Hello there. Yes, you are. Who would you be? I'm Juliet, Cassandra's friend. We spoke a couple of days ago. Of course, Juliet. How can I help you? Honestly, I don't quite know where to start. By the way, I heard from Cassandra. Sorry I didn't get back to you yet. Really? That's good. Where is she? <laughs> it's not so good. She got arrested. Yeah, but why? I was informed Cassandra had been taken into custody. Apparently, they have new evidence regarding the attack on that officer. I tried to call immediately, but they claimed she didn't want to talk to me. That's their official statement. Where did they suddenly dig up new evidence from? I have no idea, but I've just had it... I've just had it with their shenanigans. It's just so annoying that I cannot talk to her. I've been trying to every precedent I know to get in contact with her. 
Joseph, the Sally aligns perfectly with another incident. You've probably read the TMB today. You mean about the Bonton bombings perpetrator? Yeah, the woman suspected the bombings. Nina? Guess what? She's a friend. Also a member of our group, Thought. You're right, that is very troubling. Come to think of it, Abraham asked me for a favor for someone called Nina once, quite some time ago. Hope it wasn't this Nina. Might well be. I doubt Abe knew many other people named Nina. What was a favor about? Oh, it's just a small thing, nothing of importance. Uh-huh. I just spoke to Harrison, another member of our group. We agreed the police might be investigating us next. They might be on to everyone in thought now. They might lock us up straight away. I mean, can they do that? A favor for Miss Maternova? That could be important. Follow this lead, obviously. Well, even with the safety bill in place, they still need solid indication that you're at all involved in the actual bombings. Although, honestly, I'm not sure what constitutes that solid indication these days. Is there anything we can do or that you can do, main maybe? Juliet, I appreciate that you've, that you've come to me. It really is worrying, and I would take this on immediately were it not for Cassie. I made the mistake to set false priorities once. I owe Cassandra to get her out of this. Joseph, Nina had to flee because she knew the police would not go lightly and her whim would be next. Oh, well... I need time to read in some more specialized codes of law again, write some emails, see if there's a legal limbo or basically anything I can do for Cassandra. Maybe I'll come across something that might help you as well. After all, these ceases, cases seem connected. It's all I can offer, I hope you understand. I do, it's kind of a relief, thank you. I wish I could do more, I'll let you know. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Primarily concerned on getting Cassandra Watergate released from custody. I just wonder if that's going to be too literal for Symes. Where he's going to be like, oh, is he going to break her out or whatever? Like, let's hold off on that for a sec. Oh, we got a reply. Troubling. Very troubling. But answer me this one. How can I join Thought when I'm already a part of it? Send me your answer. What? Timelines.tna slash web warrior. Points out security flaws and timeline. Friend me to get express security flaw news. <laughs> Initiate. Who the frick are you, buddy? I'm uploading the picture of the dog. Don't care what Symes thinks. This is definitely the dog we're searching for. Jesus, start taking things seriously, will ya? Cool it, Symes. Warrior of the web. Look at this bullshit birthday, omnipresent interwebs. So it begins, Web Warrior hereby declares the data wars on all of you. Data wars? What's data wars? Tell the part what's right or wrong about me in here and thou shalt be rewarded. It's a trap. <laughs> Community, listen everyone. Initiate made a little game for you. I call it Horn vs. Horn and it will be available for everyone to play soonish. Those of you who want to play it right now, drop me a line. I'll get you invited to the beta test. So freaking close, damn it. This sucks. I lose this every single time. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I love that they got the meme game going, too. You're cheating. No way, Jose. My game's entirely fair. You need to learn to play as much as you need to improve your orthography. Open letter to Victor Rosen. Dear Victor, you're my idol. I really admire you and your style. You've got some awesome, an awesome tech company you call your own and wear shiny snake leather boots. And that I have probably been assembled by children in Ustvakia. So many hipsters look up to you wanting to be just a little bit more like you. There's not much more a man could want in life. Something's bothering me though. As the bright star of the tech world, you've got to improve your security. Look, if I used a login like VR Hosen and password da da da, <laughs> it wouldn't be a big deal. No one would give a damn. But for a luminous figure like yourself, just imagine what would happen when somebody who's nothing as benevolent as myself would find those out and post them openly, say on timelines or in another social media platform. Embarrassing, wouldn't it be? Can't believe we did that. 
All I demand in return is to have a chat with you personally. There's something that's been bothering me for quite some time now. Even though I got a glimpse into the Rose and Ivory Tower already. You were never available. So let's give that another try. I use a chat tool called silent underscore screen that I've written myself, which will connect to any other chat tool. So use whatever you like. My name is silent underscore scream. Or my nick for silent underscore scream is root. Yep. Was it the Rosentech building? Sure. Of course he would have. Everyone I know who's remotely into tech or programming wants to work there, which is quite mind-boggling to me. They actually hire a lot of interns and only very few people ever get permanent contracts. Just a small side note is I haven't, I've noticed very, very, very few spelling mistakes, but in this episode, I think we've got like three or four weird ones already. It's interesting. I can imagine Rosa kicking butts with the leather boots right now. What the fuck, that for real? Tried the password, didn't work. Fake? He probably changed it ASAP. You ever get into the chat with you? Nope, no chat, no message, no nothing. Bummer. Thought so highly of him. Interesting. We're starting to build out some stuff on, um, on Initiate. I am going to upload that he points out security flaws on Timeline, so we keep an eye on this. I'm not going to upload his birthday or his place of residence or his, I guess, his interests, but... Not even, I don't think. I don't think we need to put any of that stuff. But, uh... It looks like... We have a few more things to go through here. Is there anything in here? Oh, here's the contact page we didn't add. Which will get us access to his phone. Joseph, work phone, got his email, and we've got his um, office location. Okay, the mystery continues, but now we're investigating Langley. We're getting some information on Initiate, although I can be sure that he's going to cover his tracks pretty well, so we'll be careful with him, but uh, yeah. Investigation's underway. Wish me luck. See you next time. Bye, guys.